Parenting is often precluded by the assumption that the children we birth will be born normal. Discovering that her son was autistic has been one of the most difficult things Pauline has had to bear. The now single parent sheds light on her journey as mother to Joshua. This is how we cope. I'm Hugo Ribatika. Hello and welcome to COPE. Today we have Pauline on the show, mother of two amazing boys. One of them does have autism and she traveled all the way from the DRC many, many years ago, hoping to find a solution for her son's condition. Pauline, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. And also, as usual, we have Tinashe, our resident counselor. Tinashe, good to have you on the couch. Thank you for having me. Pauline, walk us through that journey when you discovered that your boy Joshua had autism. Yeah, my story is um, when Joshua was like two years and a half, mm. we discovered that uh, he was not really normal. Like he wasn't, he stopped talking. Then we, me and his, fa his father, we, 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 we just say we, we must go to see a doctor for mm. him. The first thing the doctor said is because you are staying with too many people, like uh, people speaking other language like than you. In my house, we were speaking French. In my, my neighbor kid, they were speaking Arab. They was from Egypt. And Arab, they was from, um, from Mali. They were speaking Bambara. Mm. So because our kids, they were playing together, maybe it's because of that my son, he wasn't talking. Then after some months, we see that it was not the problem. We went to see a specialist, mm. and the specialist said just uh, our child he was autistic. But he didn't. I the first thing he was like autism. What is it? And the doctor just said it's something like a disorder in the brain. Something like something is not normal in his brain. Mm. And I asked the doctor, is it crazy? Say mm, something like this. Something like crazy. But how, how did that make you feel? You know, it was like. Everything just stopped, like all my life. Take your time. Please give So it was, everything just stopped. It was like, I went through. Excuse me. No, it's all right. It's okay. It was like, uh, I went inside a, a, a dark space. I couldn't understand. I went to school. I got married and I give, I went to school like I went to primary finish, I went to university, I finish, I got married. And my first son must be oh, something like, someone like crazy. How can I live in my life with a, a child who is crazy? And the way the doctor spoke to me was like, there is no way. There is no way to help him. And I speak to the doctor, I say, is it a, something like a medicine we can give him? The doctor say, it's like the doctor also doesn't know exactly what, mm. what was autism. Mm. And he just said, no, there's nothing you can do. And I was imagining my life stay with a child who's crazy, like maybe he's going to start breaking things in the house. I'll be after him, following him, he must take things for people. So my heart just broke, and I forgot everything around me. I forgot my small child, my husband, my house, my work. In my mind, it was autism. What to do? Because there was no, there's no, there was no way to help me. No one to help me. No one to understand. 
Yeah. No, I completely understand. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult when there's a disease or an illness and in your community people are not educated about it. Yeah. So you can imagine feeling alone. Yeah. Like, okay, now it's like you are you want to be there for your child, mm. but you also like you said, you did everything right. Right? Yeah. We are raised as women, you must but, do But this. my quest, my your question child. is the not so much the di diagnosis from from the doctor, mm. but the interpretation of what of what autism is. Yeah. It's almost like he put finality to yeah. to the situation mm -hmm. instead of moderating it mm -hmm. yes it's important to be realistic but it's also equally important not to scare because yes. uh, it sounds like this was a doctor who just heard autism equals mm -hmm. brain disorder mm -hmm. and for them for him maybe in his community there's probably an old doctor they're mm -hmm. not studying anymore so it's like oof, just watch him mm -hmm. and this is the history we have in our african communities where children you hear about children who were raised in the back room of the family house yeah. till they are 50, 60 years old mm. and no one actually tries to understand yeah. them, get their medication. <laughs> Don't go to just school. Crazy. They are not even go to school. C -word, you know, when you say that C word, it absolutely rules out everything. But as a mother, that's not an option. Yeah. You know, you want to have your life, your son's life, like you said, your husband's life. You also just want to have the opportunities you want to still happen. Mm. So now what do you do? Yeah. yeah. So Pauline, you, you obviously talked about the realization of the diagnosis that, that Joshua had, uh, had autism. Mm -hmm. You then had a, a two-year-old. Uh, you had another son at the time? Yeah, uh, my second son was like uh, one month when they, they diagnosed Joshua like autistic. The second one was like one month. So. I, I, so I, I didn't even take care of him because everything I was doing, it was around Joshua. Mm. Around Joshua, what people would say about him, what my, 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 in, my family in law would say about me, about my child, mm. what, what, I, what I would be doing all my life. So everything it was questioned, no answer. No one to help me, no one to, to support me. So. It was like this, yeah. And then at some point you decided to relocate to South Africa? Yeah. So I, I tried to, to search how to help my son, which school he can go. So I just say South Africa is not so far. Mm. And they say in South Africa they have uh, best, best doctors. Mm. So I bought my son here. When I bought him, firstly I was thinking maybe they would tell me something else. Like, no, he's not autistic. No, here they'll give you tell, tell, uh, this, this medication and uh, you're gonna get better. Mm. Then when I come in South Africa, I, after one month, I go to Cornishian, Raima Musa. Mm. Then I see the doctor, the doctor say, yes, he's autistic, but uh, there is no medication for him. There is no medication to make him better, but he can go to school, special school. Mm. You are you gonna have a therapist, you gonna have speech therapist, you gonna have special teachers, then he can give, he can get better. So it's this doctor who make me see like light, like my son can can be a better person. Mm. So um, at school they, they just uh, send him to to school, and in the school. Is where I've, I I just see that I have to live my life with with a child with autism mm. because I found kid there they was worse than my son. You can see a child running all over and the teacher f uh, running after him, mm. but you can see the parent they was dressing nicely, makeup, and they were laughing, smiling. Mm. They can just say, "Hey, you stop, stop running!" But me, I was like. I don't want to live my life. I must first solve this autism issue, mm -hmm. then I'll live my life. But it's like I have to live my life with autistic child and live my life happily. So I just tell myself I'll live my life with the autist, autistic child, but live it nicely. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was obviously an important uh, milestone in your life, mm. wasn't it? An important event. Yeah. Acceptance. Yeah, I accept that I have an autistic child. I accept that it's gonna, it, it gonna be difficult for me to live with him, but I have to live. I have to be fine for him, for his young brother. Mm. 
Because if I tell myself one day, if I have depression, I have stroke one day, who's going to take care of Joshua? Because I'm, I'm his own mother. Mm. And if I die because I can't take care of my, my child, who's going to do it? I'm, I'm Congolese, I'm African. We know what we are talking in our country. They will say, this child is just, he has witchcraft, he mm. just eat his mother. Who's going to take care of my son? So I must be fine. I must be very, very fine for me to take care of him, to see him going forward and his young brother. So his young brother, uh, tell us about him. Does he have a normal life? Yeah, he have his normal life. He has his friend, but he always come back for, to his, his brother. Like he can go play outside because Joshua doesn't like to play with other kids. He's, he's, is one of uh, autistic kid behavior. Sometimes they don't like to play with other kids. Mm. He like to watch TV, watch his uh, cartoon home, eating, do his things. He doesn't like to be associated with other kids. But the young one always go to play outside. But meantime, he gonna just stop and come back. Just say that Joshua, you don't wanna play. So if he doesn't want to play, say ah, okay, I'll stay with him. So they have a good relationship, very with the two good, brothers? Very good. Yeah, they, they are very close. Mm -hmm. How does Joshua communicate with you? And how do you communicate with him? So Joshua doesn't like uh, sign language. In the school, they teach him like uh, Makaton sign language. He doesn't like it. They call me in the school telling me that your son doesn't like this uh, sign language. And I try home to, to teach him he doesn't like it. So what he always do, he always take a new a, a newspaper if he wants something he just cut like if he want a biscuit he just cut a biscuit picture and show me if i say okay i'll, I'll buy it to, to, tomorrow okay it's fine he can sit and uh, i teach so him so he understands when you speak to him yeah yeah he can understand he can he can do what you tell him to do like no now it's time to bath so go bath he can do it you can tell him no go drink water in the kitchen you can do it but for him to tell you what he wants that it is uh, the problem so he always cuts a, a piece of a picture and uh, show me or show his brother what he wants and sometimes he just do it himself like if he wants eggs he just go in the kitchen and make it himself yeah absolutely amazing yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. It has been a remarkable journey indeed for Pauline, left the DRC many years ago, finding a solution for her son who has autism. The show is Cope. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We're speaking to Pauline and we also have Tinasha in the studio. Pauline, before we went to the break, you talked a little bit about, in fact, a whole lot about Joshua, uh, your son who has autism and the journey that you've walked since you discovered he was uh, autistic at two and a half years of age. Obviously, a lot of progress that you've, that you've made, including now the establishment of your organization. Can you tell us a little bit about that organization, please? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's an organization for a family who have autistic child in a house, like a parent with kid, with autism. We are working with the GRS, is a Jesuit refugee service. Mm. And uh, this uh, Mr. Bani is a, a manager of Hill Service Hill Department. Mm. He's the one who, who contact me to be our partner. So we are working with, uh, with uh, Mr. Bani in our support group. So you've seen it necessary to bring together a number of parents that have that are children that have autism. Yes, I think it's very important because our kids they are like uh, they, they, they they are not going out. We don't have people to talk about our problem, our issues. Mm. So if we are together, we have same problem like we have a autistic autistic child. We can talk easily about our problem. But with people who doesn't have a child with autism, he, he can't understand what you are going through. So I create this organization so every, every parent who has a child with autism, he can, he can talk about his problem. We can solve our problem together. 
because it's a issue many po many people doesn't know even when we are going our with our kid in the hospital even the nurse he, he doesn't understand what what you 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 have to do with your child he, they they don't understand like when you bring your child in, in the hospital he doesn't want to to be like put the a temperature, they would say, hey, big boy like this, why? But when mm. you say, no, it's autistic, they say, what is autistic? But it's a nurse. If you are together, like you have same problem, you can easily talk about this problem and solve some, solve your issue together. And you'll be free, like, I know my neighbor, I know gonna, gonna talk about my son, my child outside. We have same problem. Mm. It's why I, I, I create this organization who's the author's zone of hope. To, to give a hope with, to the, the parent who have a kid with autism, to find out how to do, how to help our children. Mm. What are some of the problems that a parent with uh, a child that has autism would have? Firstly, you have to, to explain to everybody around you. Mm. Like, your neighbors, when your son is doing those bad, those behave, autistic behavior, yes. you have to explain to this, you have to explain to this, you are, and they don't understand. So your journey is like, no one can understand you. Mm. But if you have people who, who, who are going to same problem with you, you can talk and, and get help. So autism journey is a very complicated thing. I'm telling you. What are some of the challenges that you faced in your journey with, with Joshua? You've obviously had to look after Joshua and his brother on your own. Yeah, the challenge is uh, you have to do everything yourself. Like uh, sometimes you, you have to be a, a therapist for your child. You have to try to understand what you want. You have to understand, to, to, to find out what to do for him to, to, to be happy, to, mm. to feel better. So you don't have someone to help you. You have to do it your, yourself. Like searching in Google, searching everywhere, to know what to do with your child. So this is a, a challenge for us. And it's the support, we, we, we don't have, have support at all. Sometimes even your husband, even you, the father for the child, it can be like leaving everything to you is like you have all, all the responsibility because it's your child. He, he was born in, he was in your womb. Mm. So it's like everything you have to do it yourself. If it's a normal child, it's our child. But if yeah, it's a yeah, problem, yeah, it's your yeah, child. yeah, of course. <laughs> so this is our challenge. Many, 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 many parents we meet, obviously the men always run away. When you find out the child is autistic, mm. they might just run away and leave you with the child. So alone you have to face everything and you have to, to solve everything yourself. Sometimes the school is, is not doing enough. Yourself, you have to, to solve many things yourself. I suppose it also brings in the challenge of having relationships or, or meeting mm -hmm. uh, yeah. people. Yeah. You're still a young woman, obviously, mm -hmm. and you would want to, to meet a partner. Has that been a challenge for you? A very, very big one. Yeah, you can meet someone. Firstly, you, you charge, everything is fine. But when, when you find out that you have a OTC child, in the beginning, you can say, okay, it's fine. We can carry on. But you can see he's running. He will run. Because everybody, no one, no one can wish one day to have an autistic child. Mm. And if someone come to, he, he wanted to have a, a relationship with you and find out that you have an autistic child, he can say, oh, maybe he gonna have another one with me. So it's gonna be a big problem. It better for me to just leave it there. It's the challenge I have in my life. Tina, let's talk a little bit about coping mechanisms. Uh, certainly for somebody like Pauline, you're in a new country, right? Uh, you come on your own and it's just you and your, and your two children. You're in a community that knows very, very little about autism. And the fact that she's been here 10 years and only after 10 years has she formed this support group. Support group. 
No, I mean, her journey has been all about searching for coping mechanisms, you see, because imagine in the beginning, your community, already the family's thinking, you made this child this mm -hmm. way, the doctors don't know. Now you pack your bags, you try to look for a new place so you can get opportunities to cope better with mm -hmm. the situation, only for you to find that, okay, we can do something, but the problem will never really change. Now she's trying to understand the new reality and I cannot even begin to imagine how exhausting that is. And on top of that, now you're a single parent. You see, so I think when it comes to coping, this is the coping that she's done by creating, you know, the autism zone, which is mm. autism zone for hope because now you have a community. Yeah. The community that you didn't get to have back home, you didn't find one here just ready for you. So you create mm. one yeah. for yourself because no one will understand. And even when you're speaking about, you know, other parents, sometimes you're not even getting ideas. You just want someone to cry with yeah. who understands mm. that we can't change our children. Like I just look for peace in knowing that things are never going to change and someone understands mm -hmm. that. So I think the coping, she had to find it. It was never given. You see, mm. this is the problem with illnesses that people are not educated about. Unlike anyone who has diabetes, you know, you can go to any town and there's a support group, there's doctors, mm -hmm. there's organizations and millions of money, but you go to autism. In our community, some of them, they still believe it's something like witchcraft. Yeah, like it witchcraft. Really is, even telling... in the most developed spaces, modern mm -hmm. spaces, people still like, hmm, we actually don't really know autism, what it really is. Like we keep saying it's a brain thing, but maybe it's a sign, you yeah. see. So imagine being in a minority in the chronic illness game, mm -hmm. yeah. you mm -hmm. see. Pauline, maybe to ask, when you bring Joshua mm -hmm. into contact with other kids that have autism, or even at school, how do they relate to each other? Uh, at school, we just meet at school, but I have some friends mm. who, yeah, we just meet like, like, uh, like Glory. Mm. I meet him in my shop and I saw that his child was autistic and I tried to talk to her mm. and make friends. Mm. And was yeah. Glory's child when Joshua <laughs> met the child? No, they the, 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 they, the, the, the child place? for Glory is very very, oh, small. very small so i have another friend mm. who have a child also is a 14 ananiel mm. so they, they they are not like play you know what is it? they they don't play but they can stay time. yeah they can spend time with ananiel and joshua mm. when we go there ananiel can sit there joshua there but they are not speaking they are not playing but you can see that they are fine there's, there's a connection they, they, they have connection mm. yeah you can sometimes touch ananiel yeah yeah, something like this, but with other kids, like a normal kid, it's very difficult for them to to play. So it's like autistic child; they, they they don't like to to be with other people. Even autistic child between them, they don't like to be together. They just it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you 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 want to understand, but you can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about fears of abuse and protecting your son? when you're not there. Uh, do you have those fears? Have you put mechanisms in place to ensure that he's protected? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's also a problem. Like uh, last year, last year, last year, I even stopped him to go to school mm. because he, he changed. So I couldn't understand why he changed. Mm. He was going to, to the toilet normally and one day he just stopped to go to school, to, to the toilet and messing himself. So I go to school to, to, to talk to the therapist and it was like she couldn't help me. And I tell myself, why must I bring my son here? When you, the therapist for school, mm. you can't help me. And I tell the school, my son is no more coming because I don't know what, what happened there. I don't know, he's taking a, 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 a private transport. I don't know what is happening when he go to drop him at school. Mm. I don't know what is happening at school. Mm. So it's like, I don't know what is happening. So I say, I stopped him to go to school last year. He's no more going to school. The school called me and I went there, I explained to a social worker, I say, uh, I don't know what is happening to my son, but your therapist can't help me, the teacher can't help me. 
I don't know what, why my son will be coming here. Mm. So I keep him home. So they start saying, you know, uh, the social the social worker will come there. Maybe they will, they will take your son from you. I say, ah, it's better because, but even they take him from me, at least I did my best. Mm. I can't keep him sending, me, sending my son at school and he, he just like drop him. Mm. No, I just stop him. So this is a problem. I want to, you have to, to be sure that no one abuse your, your child. Mm. Now it's a problem. I have to go to work. I was going to work. So he, he had to come back to school alone, wait for his brother, be alone at home, I can't afford. And then mm. it was a problem. And I just tell myself, I'll stop going to work. I'll be working home. Because I'm a fashion designer, I say, okay, I'll start now working home so mm. I can see him go to school and come in back to school. So the problem of abuse is, is too much with autistic, autistic kids because they can't e explain what happened, mm. especially if I go back to my country. Most of autistic uh, girls, you find out just is, she's pregnant. Who did it? No one knows. It could have been maybe a neighbor boy always jumped the, mm. in the yard and do everything. When the parents are gone and just leave the child alone, backyard you see and one day you find out the girl is pregnant who pregnant her no one know and it's another problem on top of autism so that abuse problem with autism is, is a very very sensitive sensitive problem we, we we don't know how to do but we are fighting for that and i think you're already doing your best and i think yeah. the best thing is to know your child mm -hmm. even mm. though he because of his illness, it's difficult to understand him, but you know his patterns, mm. you know how he is, so yeah. you can identify that, no, something is different. It's different then yeah. you just decide to just try to manage that. Because I think the worst thing that can happen is people just thinking, ah, it's normal, mm. he's just changed. Mm. It's like, no, even though he has an illness, he actually does have a character. Mm. He has a personality, and you as the mother can notice that there's something that's yeah. old, and that's really the best you can do because you know him better mm -hmm. than anyone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you get that gut feeling like, mm -hmm. yeah, something, yeah, something, something, yeah. Also you, you, need to, mm -hmm. you have the power to just be the one to manage yeah. that. To, yeah. to fix it. Mm -hmm. Polina, how do people get hold of you? Those who might be in a similar situation that would like to join your support group? Uh, they can join me if they want to join me. Uh, they can go to my website. You can type, type authors. Autism, autism zone hop. You can tap it and you you go inside our website and you have my contact, everything, our number, uh, phone number, everything is in. Mm -hmm. Pauline, thank you so much, and thank you so much for being such a brave woman to for for Joshua and your other son. Yeah, I thank you to have me here because it was really really important for me to talk about it. Tina, thank you for being a part of the show again today. Oh, always amazing to meet heroes. Absolutely. What a remarkable woman, Pauline, looking after her 15-year-old son who has autism, Joshua. Autism for Hope is her organization, and she can be reached on that website. Until next week, remember, together we can. Goodbye.